Hey everybody, it's Paul. I want to talk to you today about comparing distance and performance of irons that have low lofts versus irons that have higher lofts. So I've been posting a lot of fittings lately of the distance gains through low lofted irons and I'm getting people commenting uh, and providing uh, misconceptions basically on what's happening. So a lot of people are saying that it's just the stronger lofts that are doing the distance and that it's basically a trick. I had one person comment, distance means nothing. Uh, one of them is just a five iron with a seven iron stamped on the bottom of it to boost your ego. And another person said, well, if you're going to compare irons with different lofts, uh, then what you're really doing is comparing apples to pears. So I wanted to talk about the misconception and straighten it out and let's compare apples to apples. Folks, if you like the content on this channel and you want to see more of it, please hit the subscribe button, hit the like button for this video, feel free to share with your friends or leave a comment. I will get back to you. So let's talk about this trend of lower lofted irons. So when you lower the loft of an iron, you provide more compression because there's more of a flatter face and that compression produces more ball speed and ball speed is distance. However, they're also engineered with specific weighting technology that boosts the flight and makes the ball climb higher than similar irons of lower lofts. So now what we have is we have an iron that is flying further and is flying higher. And this means that these lower lofts can now produce overall height and landing angles of irons that are much higher lofted. So we have the benefit of the lower loft for the ball speed, but the weighting gives us the trajectory of the ball flight of higher lofted clubs. So knowing this, the best way to compare distance between two sets of irons is to find the iron in each set that provides the same and similar ball flight, optimum height and descent angle. If we have irons that do that, then we can look at the distance and say, okay, now it's apples to apples. So I want to talk about a recent fitting that I did where a client came in and he had an older set of clubs and he wanted to see what the benefit was to going to something newer. So his current club was a seven iron with a 31 degree loft. And the fitted club that we ended up with was 27 and a half degrees. So we have a three and a half degree loft difference, which is a full club. So we should expect to see more ball flight, uh, more distance out of that lower loft. However, what we did was we achieved almost the exact same height and landing angle of his higher lofted club. But the beauty was, is that his club went 155 yards and the newer fitted club went 180 yards. So that's a 25 yard increase, keeping the overall height and the landing angle the same. So if lower loft was the sole reason for added distance and performance, wouldn't we see a lower flight? We didn't. We saw a similar flight, but 25 yards longer. So here's another way of looking at it. We now have two irons. One's going 155, one's going 180. They are producing similar ball flights as far as optimum height and landing angle. So now let's say I have a shot of 180 yards to a green. I have one club that's a seven and I have another club that is 25 yards shorter. So now I'm going to be down into probably a four or a five in the other set. When I go down to that four or five, wouldn't it be safe to assume that my overall height and landing angle will change dramatically and now I will be coming in flatter and hotter because I've had to go down two or three clubs. So this is where the misconceptions kind of get shattered is that if I can retain height and I'm longer, isn't that better? Of course it is. If I have to drop down two or three clubs to produce the same distance, then I can no longer say, well, it's just because of jacked up lofts because I'm going to be coming in at much shallower. You get where I'm going with this. If I'm hitting a four iron or a five iron to a green and I'm lowering my launch and I'm lowering my optimum height and I'm lowering my landing angle, won't that become harder to hit than the one that came in there at the original height and the original landing angle, but was 25 yards longer? Of course it would. This is where all of the argument about it's just lofts being played with by manufacturers where this goes out the window. It just doesn't make any sense. If your ball is retaining the height and retaining the descent angle, 
then isn't that a good thing if it goes farther? Of course it is. There's no downsides to this. So when you compare apples to apples, is the old, well, it's just a five iron with a seven iron stamped on it argument completely silly? Yes, without a doubt it is. Lower lofted clubs that retain the height and retain the landing angle of higher lofted clubs but go much further are not a scam. They are an engineering achievement that should be embraced. This is a tremendous benefit and I see it every single day in fittings. People gaining significant distance without losing any of the descent angle and the overall height. The ball is coming in and stopping quick but it's coming in from way farther out than they've ever dreamed before. They get to use a club that has way more loft than their original club because they're hitting so many clubs less. It's, it's just a general benefit overall. And I wish that people could understand this and look at the data and not just look at the number on the bottom of the club. That limits so many people in finding something that works for them. Now, is this for everybody? Maybe not. Some people still like certain things. However, ruling it out during a fitting or a purchasing process because you just believe the old adage that it's just jack down lofts is limiting your ability to find something that works really well. So don't limit your ability to find something. Get fit, try the options, and see if the performance works for you. I'm Paul Kelly. Thanks for watching.